If she's hemorrhaging internally, then within minutes she could bleed out and just die from blood loss. Because he's so small, he's giving us such a tiny little window to perform this microsurgery, and he won't make it if we don't do this. I'm just gonna grab a towel, and we're gonna put it here, and we're gonna put it on oxygen straight away. I just hope they've got it here on time. A panicking Kate has just run into the Bondi clinic with Pearl. The poodle was having a haircut when she suddenly started bleeding into her skin. They just said quickly get her to the okay. bed. Well, I can come through now. She's never had anything like this before. No. no? Okay. Red welt started appearing on Pearl's underbelly and are now engulfing her whole body. And what that dark discoloration is is whether some blood vessels are, are burst and we're actually getting blood seeping in through the skin there. So it's quite an abnormal reaction. My fear is that the bleeding we're seeing into her skin is just the very start of it. If she's hemorrhaging internally, then within minutes she could bleed out and just die from blood loss. It's okay, Pearly. As a vet, you're always taught that when you see those hemorrhages appearing in the skin, think about one condition, DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. It's incredibly serious. The whole circulation essentially becomes like jelly. It's like someone throws a handful of jelly crystals in there and the whole blood just starts to set. Did it? Well, enough. She's never had any... She's scared. Yeah. I know she's scared. It can kill them in minutes and you have to act quickly. So with Pearl, I'm filling with fluids and giving her a shock dose of steroids to try to reverse that process. Do it. Do what has to be right. done. What really worries me about Pearl right now is that I can't even see a vein to put that drip into. That says to me that her blood pressure has crashed. It's incredibly low. If this has occurred, then perhaps what's going on inside her body is DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. If it's DIC, she could have minutes to live. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm putting a lot of fluid through her system right now. So the fluid that I'm pumping in now, you can see how fast it's going in, is really gonna help. One of Kate's daughters is ringing for news on Pearl. You can get it if you want. No, I'm holding her. They can wait. She's a great dog. She's just one of the family. I have two other daughters and she's the third daughter. <laughs> so I have three girls. Right now, Kate's four-legged daughter is her top priority. Michaela, I can't talk to you. Would you go home on the bus with Madeline? Go home on the bus with Madeline, I'll see you at home. The dose of steroids I'm giving her is incredibly fast acting, but also incredibly powerful. If she does have DIC, then it will act in seconds to hopefully prevent it. That's a girl. Oh, yeah. So when I give this injection here, yeah. Yep. You may notice her breathing changes a little bit. That's just yes. a sign it's, it's going through a circulation. A powerful dose of steroids has helped stabilise Pearl. Here to help you. It's going to be okay. What I might do now is just get a blood sample from her. <clears throat> Pearl's improvement has convinced Chris she's not suffering from the lethal blood disease, DIC. But the poodle is still not out of danger. All right, we're just going to run some tests on that. Okay. It's a really simple test. It might give me a clue and that clue could save Pearl's life. I just want to show you this. So, yeah. what I've done, i put some of her blood on a slide here. Yeah. It's now been about three minutes since I did it. Yes. It, it should have really formed a thick jelly. Right, but and it's not. you can see that it's yep. still quite, yep. quite liquid. Yep. My feeling is that yep. what's happening inside her body is she's yep. just lost the ability to clot her blood. Right, yep, like a haemophilia. Yeah, exactly right. right. I would say her problem is that she has a lack of platelets. Right. The platelets roll is whenever any little blood vessel is torn, they group together and form a plug and stop that blood vessel from bleeding. This would have been bubbling away in a system for probably a few weeks, but today it's at its worst. And with those clippers going over her, they've caused multiple bleeds, but thankfully someone noticed. Imagine if she was a black poodle. Yeah. They may not have seen it. Yeah. In a way, the haircut could have saved her life. Yeah. And provided we keep her, her blood volume up, then if she has a few little bleeds here and there, we can handle that. Yes. But if she keeps on bleeding the way she has been, then it's going to get serious pretty quickly. The blood sample will now be sent to the lab to confirm a lack of platelets is the cause of Pearl's frightening condition. You'd be good girl for mummy. But right now, 
Chris's main concern is to keep the distressed poodle as calm as possible. I don't think sitting still is part of Pearl's go, but for her to really stop any more bleeding, then that's exactly what she has to do. I said rest, don't protest. Okay. Rest, not protest. Yeah. Later that night at the Bondi Clinic, Kate and her worried daughter Madeline have arrived to visit Pearl. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Can she get up? That's oh. okay. What she has on, on a, under her skin is, yeah. is pretty dramatic. It's just so sad. I can't believe this happened to her. Mm. Do you think she'll be okay? Or... I just, I guess I just don't know at the moment. Um, the whole idea of, of keeping her inside is, is, is so she can rest. Love you. Oh. 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 Love you. Oh. After having a poodle myself as a kid, I know that they're intelligent. For Pearl, though, this intelligence is almost her own worst enemy. She's analysing this situation and freaking out as to why she's in here and why everyone is all over her. Hi, beautiful. Love you so much. Hello, hello to you. What are you doing? Back at Bondi, Chris is happy with Pearl's improvement. So you're pretty up here, aren't you? But, oh, jeez, keep you away from mirrors for a few days, huh? But her family are still waiting for news about the blood test. Hello. How are you going? All right, so, um, Pearl's doing OK today. Good. But what I've done, I ran the whole of the tests on her body to make sure her kidneys were performing well, her liver was functioning normally. That's all fine. Yep. So she's pretty healthy. The one thing she's lacking is platelets. And so what we can do is actually give her steroid tablets that's going to stop her own body from destroying her own platelets. OK. OK, if we do that, then she's going to be like any other dog, just with a really bad haircut. And that costs a lot of money. So let's, let's try to focus on the healthy dog rather than the dodgy haircut, OK? To now be able to send Pearl home it means there's many more happy days ahead and hopefully many more better haircuts than she's already had. You know, sometimes Pearl in fashion, you have to be risky. Taking <laughs> risks gets results. That's what you've done. I'm sorry, Pearl. Yeah. Hey, G, there's a patient at Crash Bank. Can you come and have a look, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. At the Gold Coast Emergency Hospital. Check his chest. Eight-month-old Billy has been rushed in after being run over by a bicycle. Oh! Yeah. Okay, Billy's in trouble. The biggest concern we have is that Billy's gums are like are almost white. So she's potentially bled somewhere, and if she has bled, she's bled a lot. Right, she's got some swelling. Given pain relief, given part of it IV, part of it subcutaneously. Hey, team. The young dog is in extreme shock and needs an urgent blood transfusion. What's the heart rate, Jordan? I'm 40. And what's your pulses feel like, team? Yeah, her pulse is very weak. Oh, Billy. That's all right, you get it. Oxygen helps, oxygen helps. You need some oxygen, you stay there, hey? So Billy's pale. We're stabilising her with fluids. <laughs> so we're just going to do a little ultrasound and... See what's in there. Get a little sample, Billy. hey? You're okay. to find a pocket of fluid. Whoa. Settle, settle. An ultrasound will tell Gerardo if Billy has internal bleeding. OK. I need a little sample now, sweetie. Good girl. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Oh, wow. OK. The news isn't good. Blood. Lots of blood. Cool. Run. Thank you. Biggest concern here is that she's bled into the abdomen. The thing is, though, there's so much blood in here. Colour is terrible. So we confirmed. So we did an ultrasound and collected a small amount of fluid and confirmed that it is blood. So she has bled inside. I don't know where the bleeds come from. It could be from her spleen, it could be from her liver, it could be just from a blood vessel, we don't know. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is she needs blood transfusion. I am super worried. 
She's a sweet dog and her parents love her so much. And I think that there's a high possibility that Billy may not make it. It's blood. So, we're getting things ready. We're gonna go into ultrasound and we're gonna harvest some of her own blood in there and give that back to her. That blood that's in there is the safest blood to give and give it quickly as well because there's gonna be no reactions. Maybe get clipping. Yeah, let's go a little, just, just a little bit further. Just, it'd be good for me, don't, don't jump, hey? Okay. Let's check your kidney. Okay. Kidney looks nice and normal. And now we're coming over to the spleen. I think I found where the bleed's coming from. There is a big blood clot up near her right liver. What we're gonna do is place a catheter into Billy's abdomen. Then we're going to harvest the blood. It's gonna go through into a collection bag and then into a filter and then straight back into Billy's vein. So that's her own blood. So it means there should be no reactions at all. Right down the back here, team. Gerardo has located a spot where he'll be able to insert a catheter, but it's precariously close to Billy's spleen. I'm gonna be careful not to lacerate it because that will cause catastrophic bleeding. So that's a spleen just there, and that's our catheter. Now we're harvesting all that blood. We've got the catheter in now, and within seconds, we've collected already about 50 mils of Billy's blood. And we're about to put that straight back into her vein. We've removed 400 mils of blood and it looks like as if there's at least twice that much volume still in there. So we're going to keep on harvesting and start giving it back to her. So before, we had organs floating around in blood, but now there's significantly less. Good girl, Billy, good girl, Billy. Good. Ooh, 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 I... Nice. Good girl. Oh, hello, Billy. Oh, oh, you, oh you, what are you doing? You're stretching, are you stretching? You were stretching. So, Billy is looking around and she's even stretched a couple of times and she's so sweet means that the blood is making a difference already. So we're only halfway through giving the blood we've harvested. I want to go tell her mum and dad the good news because they need some good news because when they brought her down, they thought she was going to die. Come on through. Hey Kirsten, this is Billy's mum and dad. Hello. She was wagging her tail and scratching before. She's just sadly happy to see you guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. She's like hundred percent better, almost. Not quite back to normal, but she's. So the plan now is we're going to monitor closely and monitor for any kind of further bleeds into their abdomen. Yep. Um, we're going to give Billy some medications which help stabilize clots. So hopefully that clot that's there stays there, and then we just wait. Okay. She has about 1.5 liters of blood in her. Okay. I think there's probably about eight, 900 mils in her abdomen. 
and she was like this close to not making it. But we've pulled out about 700 mils and we've given it all back to her. Yeah. And yeah, massive difference. Right. So she just, we just gotta pray. Pray that that clot stays there. Okay, you can spend some more time. Just 12 hours later, Billy is continuing to astound Gerardo with her remarkable recovery. Hi, little Billy. Oh, you look so much better. Good morning. How was your night? Let's have a little look. Let's have a little look. Okay, there you go. You can finish it off. And then we have a look at your gums. Cool. And one more. Nice and pink. Hey, aren't you a good girl? It's so awesome to see Billy this morning. She's bright, she's eating, and the nurses say that she's walking around. We don't want her too active because there's still a clot there that may dislodge, but she's definitely heading in the right direction. And if she continues along this way, 24, 48 hours, she'll be right to go home. At Bondi, it's a packed beach on a 40 degree day. Come straight through. But the heat wave has claimed an unlikely victim. Brian and Sandra's beloved family pet, Bunny. I went out the back and she was on the, um, on the veranda, just very laboured breathing. And I think she's overheated. She was very hot. Yeah. I cooled her down, I put her in the pool and that sort of helped a bit. I sprayed some water on her. Okay. I'm just gonna grab a towel and we're gonna put her here. We're gonna put her in oxygen straight away. A lot of animals do it tough with the heat, but rabbits find it especially hard, simply because they can't pant like dogs do, they can't sweat like we do. The only way they can cool themselves down is through breathing a little bit more quickly and also trying to lose a bit of heat through their big ears. That's all they have, and often it's not enough. She wasn't breathing on the way up, I was squeezing her chest and that, and I thought she was gone. All right, so we're actually gonna put this directly into an abdominal cavity here. It's just a good way to get the fluids into it quickly. They've done extremely well to, to get Bunny here as quickly as they did. I just hope they've got it here on time. It's got some cold water here. I'm just going to spray these ears. You can see those blood vessels in the ears running yeah. down there? So that's what we're trying to target here because there's a good, really good blood supply to those ears. And if we can just cool the blood going through those ears, then you, you actually cool down all the Bunny. I've got no doubt how much Bunny means to Brian and Sandra. I mean, you look at Brian, I see a lot of people crying in this job, but when a grown man like Brian starts tearing up, he can't even bear the thought of not having her around. Hang in there, Bun. She's got a really rapid heart rate, but when I touch her, that's the most dramatic thing. She's scaldingly hot. Still getting quite laboured breathing too. Bunny right now isn't good. You can see that she's breathing extremely rapidly and that's her desperate attempt to try to get cool air in and cool herself down from the inside. <laughs> so just provide a bit of a pick me up for right. her. Slowly, Bunny seems to be fighting back. Yeah, she's, she's looking better. It's been a fair old battle, but now Bunny's temperature is coming down to a healthy range. For me though, the sign that I love seeing is when her nose starts twitching again. That tells me she's coming back. This has been a crazy 20, 30 minutes, but it's bunnies to a T. When something happens with them, it happens quickly and it's over quickly. When I rub this eye, the, she pulls the ear forward and when I do this one, usually it comes right up forward. But, so that's a bit of a response that she's, she likes that. That's the, that's the measure of a health, is it? <laughs> How much the ear comes forward, a little gauge. That's it, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I can't let it go home looking like that, so I'll get a look. Looking good. Thank you. That's all right. Bunny's really sprung back to life beautifully, so she should be fine. She's able to go home with the family, have a cool drink, she'll be happy. Uh, thank, right. you thank you Thank you, no thank worries you. at all. See you later. My pleasure. Thanks. Thanks. Chris has done a great job and... Really fantastic. When she all fluffs up, she looks like a different bunny. She's she beautiful. She's very pretty. Yeah. Charlotte. Hi. Hi. Okay, 
Hi. Is this the new recruit? It is. Oh, my God. In Richmond, Scott's day is beginning with one of the youngest and tiniest patients he's ever seen, an eight-day-old chihuahua puppy. Mm, puppy. Brought in by a very worried owner, Charlotte. He was born with a cleft lip and cleft palate. Oh, my God. Let's just have a look and say, oh, wow, OK. The deformed palate means every day of the little chihuahua's life has been a struggle. Oh, oh sweetheart, you're already okay. looking hungry, like you're trying to eat your hot water bottle. Because he can't latch on to either his mum or a bottle, and he isn't putting on weight. At birth, the vet stitched up all the roof of his mouth and stitched up the hair lip, and the hair lip's just not holding. He's had to be restitched three times already. Something more permanent has to be done. With the temporary suture out, is he able to suckle at all? No. no. No, he can't. He hasn't got the vacuum that's needed to get the milk out. Yeah, I mean, look, he's already hungry, you can see. And she mate? There's now only one option left. More surgery. But this time under anaesthetic. A risky thing for such a young dog. Let's go into the consult room and we'll chat about this very fraught surgery we're going to have to do on you, little man. Come on, then. I have absolutely no choice. I need to perform surgery today. Yes, he's eight days old. Yes, he's a high-risk anaesthetic. But I have no choice because without performing this procedure, he can't latch onto mum, he can't suckle milk, and unfortunately, he will end up starving. Well, this type of patient and also this type of surgery is incredibly fraught and not something that we, we want to do. But in his case, if he doesn't have the surgery, he will basically fade away and starve yeah. to death. Yeah, the other possibility is that he can also aspirate the milk, breathe it in and die suddenly. And you've only had him for eight days, but I can tell you, quite smitten, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, he's stolen my heart. Absolutely in love with him. He's like a member of the family already. And I've been hand rearing him for the last eight days. I'm so in love with him already. Well, I'm gonna take him downstairs and see the team. Say goodbye to your little man. General anaesthetic for an eight-day-old puppy is never good. It's never something you want to do, but it really is his last hope. I'm just scared that he's not going to make it. Hi, guys. Hi, you? Hi. Right, so we've got a, a difficult job in our hands today, guys. So we're really going to have to keep our wits about us because you can just see the size of that hair lip. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's really sad. But now, unfortunately, the temporary sutures that were put in at birth, you can see, have just blown. And now he just can't clamp down. He can't just get the suction that he needs to, right. to suckle properly. Because you can see there's actually a little tiny, tiny, tiny little hole just there, like a pinhead. But still, yeah. it'll be too big and he won't make it. So we do need to perform an anaesthetic and surgery on this guy. Nurses Nathan and Reagan will assist with the challenging task of anaesthetizing such a tiny patient. It's a anaesthetist nightmare, that is. Yeah, well, I think it's anyone's nightmare. Yeah, you know, a young, young animal, old animal, we all know that they are the riskiest. Henry won't make it if we don't do this. All right, let's start the process. Just a little bit of anaesthetic. Everyone cross your fingers and toes and paws. Because we have to do surgery on his head, mm. we can't have his head in a mask. No. Mm. So when we get down to a point where we think that he's deep enough, we're going to quickly flip him round, mm -hmm. okay? And then, Reagan, if you can extend his head, and then I'm going to hold down his tongue and try and get the tube in. All right. First task to be tackled is to try and navigate the anaesthetic. Can we place a tube down his throat? Can we place a tube in his nostril? Let's give it a go. So um, you're going to pull the mask off, and you're going to spin him round to me, okay? Ready? Three, two, one, go. Scott is hoping a narrow tube down the throat will be the most effective way to administer anaesthetic to his tiny patient. Puppy. But it's proving more difficult than he thought. The tiny little head has a really big tongue and gets in the way of our ability to look and see the larynx and pass that tube through. Yeah, just going to guess him down a bit more, it's too light. What is he on now? Is he on five? Four. Is on four? So put him up to five. I think what we'll do this time around is we'll just try straight onto this. So we'll go into his nose mm -hmm. and try this. 
Because he's so small, he's got such a fast metabolism, so he's quickly removing the anaesthetic from his system. So he's giving us such a tiny little window to perform this microsurgery. It is really proving tough. Okay, okay. let's try again. Attempt number 52. <laughs> Sure, but maybe. I know it's so difficult to tell, but can you see the bag moving, Rady? No. Oh, wait, actually. It's like it's sort of working, but not completely. So, yeah, so I'm going to take that out and we're just going to try the mask. Oh, that's really okay, okay, okay. Okay, so the new plan is basically can't get the tube down and he doesn't seem to be tolerating the nasal tube either, so we're going to keep him nice and deep. You're going to just put it over his nostril. I'm going to scrape. We're yeah. going to put it back on. Okay. All right. The pressure really is on Nathan and Reagan. They're the ones that are responsible for the anaesthetic, maintaining that and ensuring that he recovers from it. So it is quite a high pressure procedure. He's a tiny puppy. So I'm just going to scrape the edges, okay? And then we'll put him back on the mask. When we're all happy again, and Nathan, you think he's deep enough, then I'll be putting the sutures in. Okay. All right. All right, let's go for it, everyone. Ready? Three, two, one, go. With the anaesthetic now finally working, Scott can clean up the pup's lip and at the base of his nose. He can then place sutures to permanently hold the edges together. Uh, take our time, control our nerves, <laughs> and we'll go back in. His heart's beating nice and strongly throughout, so in as much as it's not very nice to hear him cry, it's better that than him not survive. So a little bit of pain for long-term gain. Sorry, baby. We can have to do it one suture at a time. Mm, puppy. Never had to do surgery in bites of five seconds before. No, this is crazy, but... It's going to be done. Yeah. yeah, difficult. Just need to keep telling ourselves we're doing it for the right reasons. He won't survive unless we do this, so I'm sure he'll thank us eventually. Yeah. Just if we want to do the right job, I know that it's tough, but I think we need to just put one more suture just on the inside. So if we guess it done one last time, then that should be it. Okay. So after the speed surgery and those little windows that I was able to place the sutures, I'm actually really happy with the cosmetic result. And we're done. The lips have come together. I feel that now he will be able to produce suction in order to feed for mum, and hopefully he'll go on to grow up to be a nice little chihuahua puppy. Bless him. He makes the cutest noises, doesn't he? Oh, man, he wouldn't go to sleep, and I feel like I need to now. That was tense. We've put three sutures in exactly where they need to be. He now has a nostril. He now has a fully formed hard palate. The fact that he fought us so much on the anaesthetic that he was screaming blue murder at points, just shows his character and that will really bode well for the future of this little guy. Yeah, gotta love him. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Here he is. Upstairs, it's been an agonizing wait for owner Charlotte. So literally just out of surgery and it was very, very challenging, but he is as tough as nails. Now you can see why I want you to do it. Yeah. He's got such fight. He really does. <laughs> so we'll be taking the suture out in, well, maybe 10 days, two weeks. We'll see how it goes. We've put a non-absorbable one in there, so it will stay for as long as we feel it's necessary Brilliant. until he's just a bit stronger and a bit bigger. Brilliant. But right now he's done great. I think you need to name him. Why don't we call him Cliff? Cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Now to get him home, get him on mum, get him feeding, get him back to bright and alert like he normally is. You guys better get off. He needs to go and have a drink, and I think you need one too. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Thank you. <laughs> All right then, Charlotte. Take care, sweetheart. And you, bye. Bye, little man. Oh, someone's home. Hello. Hi. Oh, wow. <laughs> a little handful of cute there. A few days later, Scott is making an important house call to check on tiny cleft palate patient Cliff. So that's proud mum Dolly, yeah? It is. Bless Hello. Her. Hello, you about to feed your babies? Cliff's holding his own with his brother and sister. He may be the smallest in the litter, but he's certainly not the quietest. But I can see at the same time that those sutures and just the 
uh, abnormality that he suffered with is going to mean that long term he's going to struggle to latch on and consume yeah. as much food as his brother and sister. So I would suggest that we do kind of supplement him with a little bottle from time yeah, to time. Definitely. Funny yeah. you should say that. Ah, I think you no. should do the honours with this one. Oh, yes, please. Look at this. <laughs> hey, there we go. Oh, are you going to have some? It's a really wonderful, special moment when you get to bottle feed a puppy because they are looking at you like their mum. They're pouring at you with their feet, trying to sort of pressurise the milk as if they were latched on to mum still, and it's a very special moment for me. Well, I think if this feed's anything to go by, he won't be long before he's catching up with his brother and sister. No. Hey, little man. No, no time at all. Hey. On the Gold Coast, Alex is on duty when a three-year-old cat is rushed in. Hey, this is Max. You're OK, Max. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in a bit of a panic. Max belongs to Christy's son, and she's alarmed the much-loved rescue cat is extremely agitated and struggling to stand. He spent last night outside, which he doesn't always do, but he wouldn't come back in when we went to bed. OK. Um, so he normally is on the table when we wake up in the morning. Yeah. And he was, so we let him in, and he went straight off to sleep. Um, and then he woke up a few hours later, and he was all, like, drunk, and hit the back it was all, like, he had no movement. Wow, so um, really wobbly. Yeah, and then just weed everywhere. Gosh, yep. OK. You're all right, mate. You're all right. OK, Max. Now, they said they, they do live on acreage, so their big concern is, has he been bitten by a snake or could he have a tick? Tick, yep. So I think the first thing we can do is just go over and see if we can find if he's got a tick there. Um, and then, yeah. Hang on, Max, hang on. And then I'll go back and have a chat to them. Oh, so it's all right, mate. He's having a bit of a panic there as well. He's not walking properly on his on his legs, that much we do know. And this time of year in this part of the country, biggest concern is always that he's got a tick because it's really, really common and they'll present exactly like this where they just can't walk and they're staggering all over the place and they really get quite distressed and he's really getting stressed now. We might even, we, hey, hey, no, we'll have to get him back in oxygen. Yeah, we're actually gonna pop him in a bed because he's just panicking at the moment. And when they're this stressed, they can just get into trouble so quickly. You just relax. Good boy. All right, Max. That's it. You just relax. You just chill out for a bit in there, mate. Have some oxygen and we'll come back to you in a few minutes. I get really concerned when cats get stressed like that, regardless of what the cause of Max being here today. If he gets stressed, if he's not able to breathe properly, they can get into real trouble and they can even stop breathing. So the one thing that we need to do is just get hands off and leave him to breathe in some oxygen, chill out for a little bit, and then we'll start looking for a tick again. If there's a tick there, it's really important that we get it off as soon as possible, but We've got to weigh that up with, are we putting Max in more danger by handling him at this stage? Hey, Max. Max is now much less agitated after spending a few minutes in the oxygen tent. All right, we might have another go. Alex can now start the urgent search for a deadly paralysis tick on the young cat. OK, let's have another go. If there's a tick there, I think we need to find it fast. Yes. Time is crucial with tick paralysis, so vet nurse Tiffany is assisting. Oh, actually, there it is. I think I found it. Wow. It's right underneath him there. Come here, sweetheart. Good boy. Alex has found a huge tick at the top of Max's back leg. Mm. Good boy. You're all right. Oh, it's quite hard to get off. Good boy. Look at that. Look at that. Wow, that's massive. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's been on there for a couple of days. Now we know what it is, I reckon we pop him back. Yeah. Come yeah. on, darling, back yeah. to the oxygen. This tick is pretty big. It's been on there for at least a couple of days. It's had a chance to suck the blood and it's got to this size and while it's sucking the blood, that's where it's injecting the poison and that's what's done the harm. 
The most important thing now for Max is to get some sedation on board because he's panicking. We're going to get an IV catheter in and then we're going to give him some tick anti serum and that's what's going to save his life at this point. Toxins from a paralysis tick can lead to respiratory failure and even death. I'm just starting the tick anti serum now, so this is the antivenom that'll go intravenously to help to neutralise the toxin that's running around Max's system at the moment. And this is a little bit of a dangerous time because he could have a reaction to this anti-serum and so Tiffany's going to need to sit with him and watch him really, really closely because if he has an allergic reaction, we need to stop this within seconds. Hey Max, how are you feeling? Christy has been anxiously waiting to find out if her son's much-loved cat will pull through. We found a paralysis tick on okay. him, mm -hmm. so that's definitely the cause of yep. why he's wobbly on his legs, mm -hmm. uh, and it's quite a big one. The main thing is that you got him down here, mm -hmm. and we're going to do everything we can to help him. The thing about ticks is we, you don't pull them off and they instantly get no, better. No, of course not. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So the sooner we can get him home, mm -hmm. the better. Okay. okay. All right, to see me here. So he looks a lot more relaxed. Yeah. Okay. His big sleepy eyes, that's just where he's had the sedation. Okay. And he's just got some oxygen going through at the moment. You want me to, you want to have a yeah. see him? Yeah. We can open it for a, a little bit. Just, just. Hey, Mum's here. Hey, buddy. Look at your tongue. Yeah. You like cuddled her. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you look so drunk. I know. Yeah, you've had your anti-venom, now let's hope that's enough because you are so stressed here and I think the best place for you is going to be at home. There we go, it's nice and safe in there. Good boy. You're nice and sleepy, which is good. The situation with Max now is he is so stressed in hospital that it's just, we're doing him more harm than good. So what we're going to do is He's had the anti-venom and that's his best chance of overcoming the tick paralysis. So we're actually going to get him home in an environment that he's really familiar with, where he's, he's comfortable with his surroundings and his mum's going to look after him there and fingers crossed he's going to pull through this. The main thing is you just need going to need to keep him inside. Oh yeah, um, of course. And somewhere you keep a really close eye on him. So. Yeah, yeah. Alright, thank you All so right. much. Best of luck with him. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. See you, Max. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, go and support us by checking out Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com. You'll find a whole range of great Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.